What's up guys, Handish here, and it's time for the weekly reset in Destiny 2. And this week is going to be a pretty busy one, starting today on July 7th, which is of course Bungie Day, so happy Bungie Day first up, and I'm sure they'll have a few surprises in store. So we'll round up what we know, but in game, Moments of Triumph for 2020 has begun, and so we'll touch on that, and we also have a new DLC update kicking that off today. And then for Season 11, Contact arrives on Titan, and it looks like we have the start of the Ruinous Effigy Exotic Quest this week as well. So plenty going on right now, and we'll round up most of what you need to know for the week in the video, so if you guys enjoy this one, a rating below really helps me out. But otherwise, let's get into it. Alright, so as we get into the weekly reset right here, initially, Zavala is calling us to the Exodus preparation, and this is going to be part of a pretty long quest this season, which is sort of part of the story as we go between Season 11 and 12. Ultimately, this will be linked to an exotic quest a little bit later on this season as well, but once again, the quest we can pick up from Zavala, as far as we know, isn't necessarily something that can be completed super, super quickly, although it is something that I'll keep you posted on. Also in the milestone tray right here, we can see another quest called Growth, and we're going to have to visit the prismatic recaster in the annex of the tower near the drifter. So initially, there is the means to an end quest to gain access to the interference mission this week, we need to pick that one up. But then there is the missive quest right here, and this is the one that's going to be linked to the ruinous effigy, and this is pretty much confirmed by the fact that the equinox ornament right here in the store is now going to be available. So we spoke about the ruinous effigy quest a few days ago, I do have some tips for how to get that one done pretty quickly, and I'll be keeping you posted about the ruinous effigy as well. The first step is to complete the interference mission, so we're going to have to get that means to an end quest done as well first. That'll be pretty exciting and I'll keep you posted about it, but we also have the weekly bounties right here, a show of power to defeat opposing guardians with supers in Gambit or the Crucible, and we need 15 of those, and then we've got Send It to earn points by defeating combatants and guardians with scout rifles and sniper rifles, and precision final blows with either weapon will grant the most efficient progress. Of course we get plenty of powerful and pinnacle drops right here, including the Prophecy Dungeon, so don't forget that one for the week. Also, if you're wondering about Moments of Triumph for 2020, we can see that they've brought the title back right here if you didn't obtain it, I believe, but also you may have some uh, rewards and things like that that you've already unlocked. Of course right here, we do have rewards of a raid ring and emblem, um, and I believe this is going to be associated with acquiring the new kind of max power level raid gear that Bungie have just revealed in the Moments of Triumph trailer. They said that these are going to be uncapped raid rewards for year one raids and raid lairs, so Bungie are kind of doing a mini Age of Triumph for the year one raids from Destiny 2 this summer before they go away in season 12, and that's a big part of Moments of Triumph. But they've also said, and we can see right here, that there are various different triumphs and things which aren't strictly associated with raids. So. Kind of a mixed bag right here, but definitely be sure to check it out. And if you want to check out the announcement of Bungie reprising Year 1 Raid Gear, here is the full trailer. Now though, in this lively reset, of course let's check out the Eververse store. We've got the Equinox ornament right here for Ruinous Effigy, so if you want to pick that up once you've got the weapon, it's something that you can do. We also have the Bungie Foundation Shell, which is a new thing they're dropping today alongside Bungie Day, and we can see that it costs a thousand silver, but your purchase brings joy and the power of play to hospitalized kids in need through iPads for Kids programs. So, that's one of Bungie Foundation's kind of initiatives for charity that they have, and so proceeds for this will be going to charity, which is pretty cool. So that's something to bear in mind, and it is a pretty cool ghost shell we can see in the game right here. But otherwise, for Bright Dust, we have the Welded Brass Shader, as well as the Sterling Arbor Projection, the Callisto Lancer Ship, and then the Dawn of Invention emote. Actually, quite a few different items new for this season. And then the main Bright Dust page has the Lion Garden Shell, the Rim Skipper Sling, and then we've got the Commanding Star Shell, the wacky inflation emote, uh, I'm seeing the gauntlets from the titan set from the opulence season, and then we've got the peacebringer ornament for deathbringer, as well as the emperor callus projection, the illicit transmat effects, the only the finest transmat effect, the guiding light transmat effect, and then we've got the vibrant medusa shader, the iridescent coral shader, the oiled gunmetal shader, and the bruised blush shader. Of course we have our pinnacle drops on the moon though, so we've got anguish, 
uh, as well as despair, and finally insanity for the nightmare hunts this week. If you're jumping into the Garden of Salvation, of course we can get pinnacle gear from here, so we've got 0 to 100 as the challenge this week. And then there is still the Moon Dungeon Pit of Heresy as well. The Nightfall Ordeal is going to be the Festering Core, which should be interesting to jump into. But then we have the Tree of Probabilities, and these are our standard Nightfalls. This one can drop the DFA Hand Cannon. We've also got Sabbath and Sung, where you can get the Duty Bound Auto Rifle, and Warden of Nothing, where you can get the Warden's Law Hand Cannon. Showdown and Momentum Control are the featured playlists in the Crucible this week. Inside of Gambit, we also have Infamy bonus throughout the week. For the update that we saw in the game today, a few quick patch notes. Bungie say, primarily, this one's coming with a bunch of bug fixes, but they fixed the problem where the Heavy Hitter's Triumph wasn't progressing and unlocking properly. And that's the one to defeat the bosses in contact. They also said that this won't be retroactive, so we're going to have to defeat any of the ones that we need again. Importantly, they fixed the problem that stopped the Cold Denial and Falling Guillotine from offering random perks, or two random perks in the final column when unlocking Umbral Enhancement 3. And so basically it will now be possible to farm for much better rolls, or at least varied rolls, of those weapons. But also the patch includes that minor nerf to the Fallen Guillotine, or the bug fix, to stop it damaging enemies after the heavy attack animation is completed. Additionally though, you can now use the Seraph weapons reprised for this season to complete the catalyst for Sleeper Simulant. And they've updated the Last Wish and Garden of Salvation's raid gear to have a Season of Arrivals Max Infusion Cap, and then removed Scorn, Cabal, Vex, and Fallen variations of weekly bounties from the Season of Arrivals pool. Of course, there are some additional changes, anything major I will keep you posted on, but otherwise you'll find those patch notes on the news tab at Bungie, which I will link in the description. Bungie also have a separate list of known issues real quick, if any of these have been affecting you, but the Lake of Shadows Nightfall is incorrectly requiring players to own Forsaken, and players who finish the means to an end quest and do not claim the challenge reward will be locked out of next week's portion of the quest. And so if you have experienced that, hopefully that's the reason and you'll be able to make progress moving forward. But also the Unfurl the Banner Crucible step updates when players reach Mythic Valor rank and not the Fabled rank. The Font of Light's armor mod description does not match its effect, and then Wither Horde projectiles can appear randomly on screen when it's stowed. Season of Arrival mods are not appearing in player collections, and then the Fate of All Fools perk for Jade Rabbit isn't working as intended. As well as an issue where Titans and Warlocks cancelling their jump can sometimes auto-jump when landing. All of those are issues that Bungie will be working to fix soon. And for our legacy content in the Menagerie, inside of the normal mode, we've got modifiers of Void Singe, Iron, and Heavyweight, and then we've got Hextinguish, Iron, Blackout, and Void Singe in Heroic. For any of the Prestige Raid Lair modifiers, we've got Gladiator, and then Armsmaster with a Kinetic Shotgun, Energy Auto Rifle, and a Rocket Launcher required in the Power Slot. Reckoning drops this week will be from the Swords bosses, so that'll include Lonesome, The Last Man Standing, Nightwatch, Soul Survivor, and Just In Case. But of course you can get some of those reprised weapons from the Dredge and Ingram and the Prismatic Recaster. So worth bearing that one in mind. You can also get reprised Escalation Protocol weapons dropping in the Prophecy Dungeon, but if you want to hunt any of the OG ones before they go away, for any collectors out there, the boss this week will be Nax at the Famine, and so all three of the weapons can randomly drop when you take that boss down, but otherwise, updated versions with random rolls will drop in the Prophecy Dungeon. Also, for some of the legacy content in the Dreaming City, Ouroboria is going to be the Ascendant Challenge, so that's the first one in the rotation, accessed via Aphelion's Rest. But if you need the gameplay of the location and collectibles inside of that challenge, I'll run that out at the end of the video. But otherwise, for now, guys, that is everything that we have to speak about for the reset initially this week. I will be keeping you posted with all the quests, new updates, details, and that good stuff on the channel. So be sure to get subscribed right here so I can keep you up to date. But otherwise, if you've enjoyed the video, a rating below really helps me out. But for now, I hope you have an awesome week.